Hey everybody, welcome along to Shakedown. This is episode 11. Um, sorry for the long delay to try and get this podcast going. Um, I'm trying to actually get this podcast into video form. So I spent the last few days trying to um, download some video editing software. And uh, so far I haven't found anything that would be deemed suitable for recording purposes and trying to get them on YouTube and so on and so forth. And when you think of the expense that's added onto it, you know, it's kind of annoying. But I digress. We're going to continue on as we are doing, but I will find something on video form um, at a later date. I'm going to try and get something together. Okay, so the big, big talk at the moment is the with England in the World Cup. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch most of uh, the England, uh, Belgian, uh, not the Belgian game, the Colombia game. And um, the game just had us a complete knife edge. Um, we got the penalty um, and uh, Harry Kane took, took it away, you know, no problems. Um, I was there thinking to myself, we're well, all over them. And then the next minute, sudden death, last minute, the they just equalised. And I just I sit there thinking, oh my God, we are going to do this all again. My head was in my hands. And then we, so it went to uh, extra time. And, uh, well... It was just kind of, it was just thinking, it was just thinking that one moment is going to spoil it. One moment. But um, we just more or less hung on, I think. Um, and then it went to penalties. Now, I had in my head thinking what was going on with the penalty, what, who was going to take it. Um, and I was off by about two players. So it just, it, it was so dramatic. Knowing the history of that we had of, ha- of having a penalty shootout with other countries, knowing that we have failed miserably. Um, but, good news, we have won three penalties, sorry, four penalties to three. Um, Jordan Pickford with that save, oh my god, that was, it was a ridiculous save. He pulled off two saves, in fact. One in the game before the equaliser and the other one in the penalty. It was just really, really brilliant to watch. Um, so we go through and we play um, Sweden um, tomorrow. And um, yeah, I, I everybody's in belief right now. Everybody's got this whole wave of falling in love with this team again and and showing us what they could do and and everything. It's 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 crazy at the moment. Um, I want to say that we might be able to do it, but I keep on always just saying, let's go through this team. Let's go through this team. That's what I'm saying to everybody. I'm taking it one game at a time. I can't just keep on having to say, hand on heart, thinking I'm going to do it. And I know some of you might be there thinking, it's so cynical to say, but, you know, sometimes it just never goes well. And I'm an Arsenal fan, and I know what we um what we've been doing the last few years and and such. Like I know disappointment when I see it. I don't see it in this team, but if they if they lose tomorrow, you know what? They exceeded everybody's expectations, including my own. But if they go on tomorrow and win it, and I'm hoping that we do win it, let's be clear. Um, we will go through to the semi-finals. And you know what? It, we are going to be um, in complete support of these guys. Um, to we even think about, to even think about going to the final at that stage. Um, it's, that, it's that mindset, really. So at the moment, I'm just enjoying it all. But it's been a good thing. Um, this World Cup has been insane. Nearly all of the big teams are out. 
I just finished watching um, the Brazil uh, Belgian game, and uh, Belgium just knocked out Brazil. It's it's mad. Um, France went through today. They've beaten um, so yeah, France beaten Uruguay today um, by two goals to nil. Um, it's it's it was a kind of a a, a carrier's effect, really. On the Uruguayan goalkeeper, I, I can't remember his name, but uh, it's it, like Griezmann just shut the ball. He didn't even the ball didn't even swerve or anything. It just went straight at him. It looked like you think it's a simple catch, but he just punched it, and then it just turned into the goal. It was just so comical and so funny. It was ridiculous. Um, but you do see goalkeeping errors like that. Um, like Carrius, as I said, but it's really, really, really interesting to see um, this game kind of turning on its head. Um, it's bonkers. This just shows you that anything does happen in football. Um, so, yeah, that's really uh, what I'm going to talk about here um, with the football. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to move on to the NHS, its 70th birthday. Um now, I work for the NHS. Um, I don't like talking about work too tough because, you know, um, it, with social media and everything these days, people can actually, you know, tw turn and twist this against you and everything. But, um, yeah, I've been doing it for um, about, well, about six, seven years, I think, um, now. I've been doing it since 2013. Um, and I've and I currently hold down two jobs within the HS, and um, I've met some brilliant, brilliant people over the years. I've uh, worked with, with some brilliant people as well, um, putting a lot of effort into what we're doing and doing this day after day. You know, you know, everybody's got their opinions on on how the NHS is, but um, I think. I think, in essence, this NHS, to have gone through 70 years uh, and still standing, it's quite an achievement, uh, if you really think about it. Um, there's a lot more that needs to be done to actually get it better, It's it's got to be said, um, because there's a lot that's going on right now. Um, you've probably seen it in the news. Um, but, um, yeah, a lot needs to be a lot better, and... Um, Hopefully, it can actually survive another 70 years, but um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so, I just thought I'd just mention that. Um, so, I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about um, Unsolved. It's a Netflix show that I've watched, um, and it features the um, unsolved cases of the Notorious B.R.G. and Tupac. Um, and I kind of scratch my head really because of the development of how things were um it's really interesting to to find out how deep this thing goes really 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 deep now no one knows who's who's done it and and it's kind of it, it's kind of sad i mean the bottom line is this really um i love my music i love hip-hop music and it's sad that in the cases of these two people, they were only in their mid twenties. The world has lost two of the greatest rappers of all time. I'm just gonna leave it there. I mean, all time. And I so and I sometimes wonder what it'd have been like had they still been alive. What would happen? You know, what kind of music would they go on to make? Who would they work with? Would we leave, would we see the likes of Drake and 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 Nicki Minaj and and everybody else, you know, all these people? Would we see the likes of them? I don't know. It's 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 kind of really testament. But um, I I still wonder what it would have been like. I still wonder. It's kind of sad to see that it's gone down this way, you know, with all these uh, um, violence. And it's gone to escalating into music as well. Um, it's just sad how it's all kind of come to cross. You know, you've got uh, Tupac, who's got a mind 
he's got a brilliant mind. I think he's a genius when he does when he does this sort of thing. He um he looks at the world and he looks at what's going on and he talks about it. You know, um, he tr he tries to kind of understand of where he, he knows where he is, and um, and he knows how good he is. It's just that the thing is with with him, he he, he can talk about what he what he feels. He knows that he's blessed. He knows where he knows that he got this far. Um, whereas um, Notorious B.R.G. with him, um, he knew from the beginning of where he wanted to be, um, and he he built up this picture about what he wanted to do with his life. You know, even though it was gonna, it was not gonna, it was gonna ruffle uh, feathers with his mother. Because uh, his mother kind of got, into, kind of understood with it, with, him, with herself of what her son would would have liked to do, but he went ahead and chose his own path and everything, you know. Um, but they both um, care for their mothers. It's it's quite um, plain that they'd like to do that. Um, they both have written some brilliant music, as I said, um, and it's sad that these guys have like um you know are gone and uh unfortunately we're we're not gonna experience these kind of these kind of people again um it's it's such a shame but um i i, I urge you to look on um unsolved um on netflix because it's really really an interesting story it really is um i was so glued to it from minute one um it was brilliant so yeah so with that, we're going to get real. We're going to get real right now, and we're going to talk about dealing with change. Now, this is something of, of an emotive subject for me because over the course of my life, I've dealt with many changes, um, and personally, it kind of it kind of got me to where I am today, but um, I wanted to try and speak to you on a on a on a nice level about the mindset of where where I'm at with this or but also in turn it can help other men as well. So um why would some men can deal with change and why some men can't deal with change? Now this is kind of interesting, you know, because I've seen men that can't deal with change, that don't like change um because you know they're used to certain things they're used to having a certain way of of life you know um i've i've known men to um have an idea about what they want what they want and how they was going to get it but when you're doing something else entirely you're not going to you're not going to have what you've learned and what you built up you have to adapt to it you have to embrace it. Um, you have to build up new ideas. And for some people, they can't really do that, you know. Um, I've seen... it. For, it funnily, it reminds me of Still Game. There was this episode on Still Game. And there was this guy um, who was living at home. Um, he never went out, never experienced the, world, the, the outside world, never talked to anybody. He was a complete hamlet. And... Um, one day they where the place where he's living he um he got kicked out and got transferred into a new place and for a while he met um uh Jack and Victor who are the stars of the show um they took him out and they experienced all these things about what was going on between when he when he last saw him to how he is now and he and and then at one point he just thought it's not for me. It's because he's comfortable of where he is and everything. And some men are comfortable. That's my whole point. Some men are comfortable in where they are, but some people, some people, when they're ready, they'll take it. They they'll come out their comfort zone, and they say, "Look, I don't want to be um, comfortable anymore. I want to challenge myself, and I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that." So, uh, next question. If a man, sorry, if a change in life is so bad, how do men respond? How do they move forward? Well, 
like I said, this was in an emotive subjects when I'm when I was writing up this uh, podcast, and um, yeah, I've dealt with a load of deaths recently. I've lost my grandparents in the last um, couple of years or so. I've lost cousins. I've lost um, uh, I've lost great uncles. Um, and it's such a blow to me um, to think to yourself, like, with these sort of people that's come into your life and made um, an impact in your life, and, you know, and then these things do happen. And as a man, I kind of had to sit down there and and I had to give speeches to audiences to tell them about how proud I was to know them and how special they were to me, and they are. Um, but in the question is, how do I respond? And the way that I respond is that I know that I want to be a family man someday. I want to be able to achieve things someday, to learn, to say to them, look, this is what, uh, this is what, um, such as such has taught me. And I want to be able to talk that to, um, my own family. I want to instill the, instill the beliefs and the values that I've been taught onto my future children and the children before that, uh, after that, and then after that. So, with some men, some men can't respond to to dealing with a change that's so bad. Some of them turn into turn to drink. Some of them turn to drugs. Some of them just don't really feel that they can't really deal with um with all this stuff, and so they look for other ways to escape from it. Um, and this is where mental health does come in. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just don't know with, with certain guys, you know, you don't know what they could do. You don't know what could happen. Something can trigger off and they can actually do something, something that's, that, that, that they wouldn't, you wouldn't think that they could do. Um, and I think that, um, says it all with men, really, um, we always have to respond. We have to we have to show that we can be a positive influence in our own families or in our own communities. No matter what, no matter what takes you away from life, no matter how bad it gets, it does get better. It just takes one day at a time, and I think most men need to realize that because we just don't do that as men. You know, all we do is wallow or whatever some men can wallow for a short period of time some just kind of you know let life you know they they just they uh, I, I can't say that it's not gonna go bad for them because i'm not every man you know all i can do is say to them that you know i think these are the sort of things that causes um that causes you to change, but you can't, you, you can be the change, you know, you can be somebody different, you can rise above anything if you put your mind to it, but some men can't, you know, um, yeah, so I, I think I've answered that question, <laughs> um, can us men adapt to change, or Will they just get that upset about that change? You know, um, and I just, and, and going back to what I just said, um, some people can adapt to change. It's just a question of their mindset, their wills, their beliefs, um, their trust in themselves. Um, can they can they do it? Will they do it? It's all up to them. It's all up to their mind. It's all up to the people that they have around them. If they they can actually believe that they can actually do it, if they can talk to them, you know, um, you know, sometimes you can't deal with something on your own, and uh, sometimes you're going to need help. And there's always help out there. If if people can just ask for it, they might get it. But just don't um, throw something back in their faces if you can't be able to help yourself. Because in the end, it's your problem, it's your life, and you're going to have to deal with it. 
somehow, some way, you know, you have to seek a resolution from it all. So I just thought, you know, um, you know, I just thought I'd just say that really. Um, yeah, so I've come to the end of the podcast. Um, as I said, um, it's all about England tomorrow. And um, my Extraordinary Person of the Week award is going to go to none other than, than, than uh, Gareth Southgate because um, I really like what he's done, to be honest. This is redemption for him. Going through that penalty shootout kind of brought it all back to Euro 96. And I remember as a kid watching it and I saw him talk a penalty and I remember hearing the commentator saying that He's never, ever taken a penalty before. And I thought, uh, if he does it, great. If he doesn't do it, you know, it's going to hurt him. And it did hurt him. I could see on his face. I could tell that he, I could tell that he wasn't going to be able to recover from that. You know, he kept playing and then he retired. And then he started becoming a manager and, and uh, he's done certain things. And... He got to the under twenty ones with with England one one the uh, uh one the I think it was the Euros that he won, but um this is now a big stage for him to come up, you know, um but he's done quite well and he's also um, giving everybody talking about the waistcoat um which is like him fashion but to tell you the truth I've worn waistcoats and um, ties myself so uh, that was came before that happened anyway um, I think most men have done that but he just kind of made it look you know kind of special um, but let's hope he can lead us um, tomorrow into the semi-final I hope so because it's just everything I mean going against Sweden you know here in the UK we love going to Ikea we love doing all that unpacked furniture and everything the hours it takes to get it to how we want it um, in the end, following those instructions. Um, but, um, you know, just Sweden's got some dangerous players, so hopefully we can actually do well in this competition. Um, we are doing well, but I hope we can actually go on and do a bit more because we need a bit more. Um, I want to believe that it will come home. I want to believe so. So with that, um, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. Um, as I said, I'm going to keep on having to investigate to try and get um, the podcast in video form because I really do want this podcast to grow. I want it to reach to new people and um, I will do that as soon as I can and I will give announcements to when I'll be able to do it. Um, I'm coming up with a podcast next week, sometime next week. Not sure when, but because I've got a busy week in store. Um, But I will get another podcast out. In the meantime, though, you can get at me through my social media. So it's uh, Facebook, Theo Samuels. uh, Instagram, Theo Samuels 11. um, Twitter is uh, at Theo underscore Samuels. And you also can reach me on Snapchat as well. the handle that I've got is T Swoosh Eleven. Um, really, really um, happy to done this podcast. Um, it's a bit of an emotive one for me, but there's going to be a lot more of emotive ones coming out soon. So uh, keep it locked here on Shakedown, and I'll catch you. And I'll uh, catch you. <laughs> I will catch you on the next one. Cheers, people. Goodbye.